Attention, all medical staff. Trauma code for children. For the first time, we gain unprecedented access into Singapore's largest children's intensive care unit. Working in the ICU, even if your feet are paddling furiously underwater, you have to still be able to perform efficiently. Sands are improving. This week, three children defy the odds. Hi, darling. Is that a smile? We really didn't expect her to really recover so fast. Because up, up, up. But this is just the beginning. The only thing that we hope is for Aulia to grow up healthily. The chances of her going back to ICU is 99% high. At the history of her spinal muscular injury, quite normal. Uh, baseline on home by practice of seven. Good morning, Marcus. Main issues uh, is that. Two weeks ago, nine year old Marcus was on the brink of death. Yesterday, he finally got well enough to be taken off life support. I sat down and I said, you know, do you know what happened to you the last two weeks? He said, no, you know, it's just my chest pain and, you know, why is it that I have to stay in the hospital? He don't even know how many days. He don't really recall the entire process. But getting off life support is just the start of a long road to recovery. Being hooked to the machine has weakened Marcus. He wasn't able to eat or move much for the past two weeks. Slowly, huh? a bit, a bit, okay? My country. Hmm? Troy's too near to the cup. Little, can I have one more of these? One more of these. Huh? He's awake, he's asking for lots of juice, uh, being overall just grumpy with the entire medical team. This is your breakfast. I don't want to eat more anymore. I need. Juice. Marcus, yeah, but you cannot drink so much. Later, later lunch and dinner, we ask now for juice. Now it's only breakfast. Yeah. You don't get angry. Uh, then I need juice. Drink okay. water. Yeah. I know. Okay. Juice. Okay, Marcus, Marcus. Okay, don't be angry. I relax, want relax. Juice. Honestly, patience is also not my middle name. <laughs> so for him to behave like that, while I know it is not right, I don't think it's the right time to really demand um, a lot from him right now. Ah, ah. Is it you're already so warm, you've got fever already, don't be so angry. So it's not uncommon for some of our children to have mini tantrums in the unit. It's the way of communicating their displeasure at being in a situation that they're uncomfortable with. Ah. The intensive care unit, while we try to make it as child-friendly as possible, is not their home. It's, it's foreign, it smells funny, the lights are always on, and it can be very disconcerting for them. So the doctors at the children's ICU also need to learn how to deal with tantrums from these sick and anxious little children. So the addition. I cannot oh. hear you. Apple juice. apple juice. We give you something like apple juice, Ken. Is okay? The ICU team has an ingenious solution. Ken is a juice. Also a juice. Black but it makes you strong. Black currant? Uh, like Karen, like Ravina, you know? Ravina. Okay. Ravina. Wow. Yes. Then when you're much better, then you can think about it. Yeah, you want know, to make you stronger. See? Yes. Okay. That color flavor. Mm. Is it very sweet? It's quite nice. They have found a drink that tastes just like fruit juice. Marcus, you want your juice? But contains the nutrients that Marcus needs. Bribes, threats, rewards. Finding out the things that they enjoy doing and trying to facilitate that happening helps towards decreasing the tantrums and helping them to engage a little bit better with uh, the team that looks after them. Gosh, you drink juice already? Do you want to show you? Today we are going to do seven exercise. Before Marcus can go home, not only must he acquire enough nutrition, he must also gain enough muscle strength to get out of bed and walk. See how? You stand up for me. If you stand? It's very dizzy. I see. Okay. If you can't do it, we leave here for tomorrow, okay? So after that, no more. Little bit only. No, I don't want. I want, but it's too for you. Why you cut? False. 
if you're on a heart and lung machine and you're at that age and you know you don't really know what's going on. I think we just have to try our best to understand the patient's situation and also try to adapt our treatment, you know, um, accordingly. Okay. Yeah, if you cannot, Adi won't push you, okay? Mm. Gradually, Adi had to exercise. Then your heart and lungs will be stronger. Then you can go back and play soccer. Mm. Okay, push up and down. Mm. Down, down, down. Yes. One, two, three. Up, I guess up, 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 up. Very good. Can see your picture there? Handsome, right? Good. Ready again. Huh? Also struggling with her recovery is three-year-old Aulia. Four days ago, the cancer-stricken little girl went under the knife to create an artificial opening called a stoma. The procedure is meant to speed up Aulia's recovery from a life-threatening infection. dressing for her. It can be a challenge to actually hold her down during the change. You suck it on the taco. Yeah. Taco. 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 If she's like, no, I don't want, it's like you have to explain to her why. It's like, I don't want you to catch a bug, I don't want you to catch an infection. So we need to keep you clean, that's why we are cleaning you up now. So a lot of explanation along the way. No, Mama need to put this. Mama do, but you open. Okay? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's why you're scared, right? You, you not can, right? Because this one, you see, so soft. Mm. Like your baju like that. It doesn't make you suck it. Tak suck it, Okay? So you see, if your bum bum is like that, nah, pull, uh, auntie like that, put inside. Mm. Like that, right? no? uh, put there, no? Later, the wound will heal. Mm. Okay? Can? Okay, what do you say now? Thank you. Uh, no, you don't okay. cry. High five now. Okay, friend, uh, friend. Friend already, yeah? Uh? She is like more understanding now. I think the she knows that every day she needs to do all these things. Eventually, like it's a like learning process also la, for her that she is getting used to it also. Yeah. Aulia has been in and out of the hospital for a half a year now, and each time she's learned to cope better with the pain. Today, she's eating solid food for the first time. It is a sign that she is getting stronger. It means that after close to a month in the hospital she will finally be able to go home. Before three-year-old Aulia can be discharged from the children's ICU, her mother, Shikin, has to learn how to care for her wounds at home. While the ICU has an army of nurses and doctors to care for Aulia, back home, it'll just be chicken. Cleaning the wounds is difficult because it distresses Aulia. So Aulia already had four cycles of chemotherapy. So the mother is already very knowledgeable. <laughs> she knows a lot. Because through the repeated interaction with us, you know, she gained quite a lot of knowledge. She become less anxious. Because she is strong fighting all this disease and I have to be there for her all the time. So I think that I have to be strong for her. And then the strength eventually came there on myself. Doing so good, Aria. calm Alia down, music therapy was prescribed for the wound dressing session.
We want to bring down the anxiety, we want to provide you know, opportunities for them to be a child again. It's like it helps her to be grounded and then it's like reinforcing that you know, she just needs to be still. Like okay, even though you are sick, you know, you have to undergo medical treatment, painful procedures, you know, there's still room to be a child, you know, to play, to exercise your imagination. You want to go home tonight? You want to go home? Yes? Uh, no, don't cry. Okay, don't cry anymore, please. Finish, finish. 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 Yeah. Very good. Okay. She had a long journey and yeah. she had a very difficult time. Oh, okay. Mommy has done very well, I think. <laughs> Thanks. Aulia has been in KK Women's and Children's Hospital for half a year. She received four rounds of chemotherapy treatment, then spent time in the children's ICU fighting a life-threatening infection. With the infection at bay, she can finally prepare to go home. Born with a progressive degenerative disease, Three-year-old Sinlin was rushed to the children's ICU weeks ago because she could not breathe. A mechanical ventilator kept her alive. Two days ago, doctors removed the ventilator. Sinlin's parents had decided they would not hook her back to the machine even if she failed to breathe on her own. The odds were 50-50 on whether she would survive. At first, she deteriorated fast. My wife was like telling me that she started to feel her hands and legs started to be very cold. So we, we, we thought we were going to lose her at the point of time. Oh. They took turns to carry her for what they thought would be the last time. Two days later, Sinlin defies the odds. Are you feeling good? Yes! You're doing well, Sinlin. Her eyes start to roll around, play around. So this has give us some, some hope that we, I think we can uh, prep. This time she may have actually won the virus fight and then we can actually get, get home. Good job, Sinlin, okay? You're doing well, don't worry. So you're going to remove it and move this way? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. right, come on. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Come, come, come. Very good, Cindy. Come, very good, Cindy. Okay, move back the mask. We were even discussing end-of-life care with the parents already. I mean, we really didn't expect her to really recover so fast. Mm. Okay, bye-bye. I see you in clinic, okay? to see if patients recover. Yeah, I think that's really heartening and that's really what, as a doctor, you want to see. That is something that money can't buy even. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Also beating expectations is nine-year-old Marcus. Do anything or not? Looking right. <laughs> Doctors have given him the green light to be discharged sooner than expected. You're going to go home? Yeah? You're going to behave yourself? The, the worry is probably the home care uh, that we are able to provide because he may really become lazy and not want to move around that much. I mean, here we have the therapist that sort of like forced him to do a bit of exercise and I realised that he's already not very motivated to move that much because he's also feeling weak. So we have to keep encouraging and keep, you know, motivating him. Okay. I think we have crossed the most important and the most critical um, part of the entire process. The rest is really just to ensure that he recovers and I'm sure it will be easier as long as I have patience. Just now when she wake up, she said, uh, Mommy, I want to go shower now, I want to go home already. You know, she's like so excited that she wants to put on everything and you know, she just like want everything to be fast so that she's able to go out already. How are you? I have something for you. It's a certificate for the strength and courage shown for chemotherapy. Smile! <laughs> Please show your team a smile. So
So Aulia is very happy and she's like she cannot wait to go home and play for all her toys already. Yeah, and I'm also quite relieved that finally that we can you know lead on with our normal daily life back at home. I would say one of the best things about working in the intensive care unit is the opportunity to walk with my patients and their families in the hardest period of their lives. And that, I think, makes me a better person, a lot more empathetic, a lot more understanding about how bad things happen to really good people and how they come out of it. When she was only two and a half, Alia already wanted to go to school. But childhood leukemia derailed those plans. Alia spent the last six months in the hospital. First for chemotherapy, then battling one infection after another. Oh, you want to become the army girl? Oh, okay. I thought you want to become doctor, like doctor so? No? Oh, don't worry. Okay, check your heart. So she always have a lot of ambitions to, to know, I want to be a doctor, I want to be an army girl. So I said, if you don't be all this, you need to go to school, you need to learn and study and so on. So every time she will be excited to go to school, looking forward for school. Okay, school bag. Okay, school bag. Bring outside. Turn your school bag. Everything ready? Everything inside ready? Can you check? Okay. You know, after all, whatever that she's went through, you know, a lot of chemo, high intensive chemo and so on, with a lot of surgery and so on, she is like much more uh, yeah. matured now. Put on the table, so we'll be back to school later, okay? Good. Uh, sing in school or not? You know what to yeah, sing? Yeah. What song you want to sing today? You don't, don't move around, you have to stand and sing for a day. One, two, three, go. I appreciate life more, we appreciate her more. You know, the strength that, that, that she has put in, has put an, uh, put an a thing on myself, that you never know that like how strong you are until that thing has really actually happened to you. Okay, come, bring your school back. Stand up. Yeah, mommy, stand up. Okay, come back. There's always a rainbow after a storm. So the only thing that we hope is for Aulia to grow up healthily and that she won't be, be feeling the, the pain and suffering that she's been uh, feeling the past years. Yeah. Six months after her discharge, Sin Lin has settled back into a home routine. We are able to so-called keep her back to a normal. So, so far that we are quite happy about it. But it hasn't been easy for Ding Shan and his wife without the help of the ICU team. She will need to do normal suction routines uh, every day, so three times a day. So we will have her suction machine uh, over here. And during the suction, we will help her to do some cough. So the cough assist machines is, is over here. We do suction, okay? Yeah? Caring for Sinlin is a 24-7 job. Every day, Ding Shan and his wife rush back home after work to take care of Sinlin. But there is no cure for Sinlin's condition. And she can take a turn for the worse any time. So for us, it's I really don't want to think so much on the emotional side, but really to, to be with her and, and carry on as long as she, she, she can. Hi. Hello. Thanks for coming. <laughs> to provide some relief for caregivers, the hospital is pilot testing a support program. 
where pediatric nurses help out for four hours thrice over a six-month period. How are you today? Good. You want to say hi? Hi. Roll eyes. Say hi, Ee. <laughs> okay, she's in good mood today. Uh -uh. Okay. Yeah. So, Ee, take care of you, okay? Let me go out already, okay? And say bye-bye. Papa. Okay, good girl. Bye-bye. I heard your daddy say this is your favourite storybook, is it? Yes. Okay. Then at this portion, at least, we can just rest ourselves. It's good for us especially because we, we have an elder girl. Then it's sometimes if we don't bring her out, then sometimes we feel that most of the time we are actually at home. Then we, we worry that she'll be neglected. <laughs> How's everything? Oh, very good. Thank you, Ee. Oh. <laughs> Bye bye. I say bye bye. Oh. Okay. <laughs> bye bye, daddy. For me and also my wife is, um, we can't really escape from her that uh, she totally is free from uh, illnesses. The chances of her really going back to ICU is, I can call it, ninety nine percent high. The main thing that is inside my mind was there's no time for sadness. If I leave my mind to sadness, uh, then I will not have enough time and concentration on my girl. And in the event that she's uh, having stress, uh, I, I may not be able to help her much. So I was like telling my family and even my wife and say, let's leave the sadness to the last. And we, we just uh, enjoy and go through whatever we have it now. We, we have now. Who has a history of uh, spinal muscular atrophy type one? Uh, baseline on home by pet. Six months after her last day in the hospital, Sin Lin was readmitted to the children's ICU. I have looked after quite a few patients with neurodegenerative diseases who are also on ventilators. And every time this happens, it is not easy for the family. Neither is it easy for the ICU staff, and it's also not easy for myself. I mean, working in the ICU, we see patients getting better, patients whom we know will not get better. The knowledge to how to care for the families uh, beyond what medicine can do is really uh, a learning journey for myself as well. I think we derive a lot of strength from that, even if we can't provide a cure to provide that comfort.